Is homosexuality a choice? Can religion steer young people away from that choice? Our cover story is reported by Aaron Moriarty of 48 Hours. I was a perfect, golden, super Christian, ideal man. And inside? Inside, I was scared, broken, afraid. I knew it wasn't real. I cried myself to sleep so many nights, praying, God, please change me. 29-year-old Adam Trimmer grew up outside Richmond, Virginia, struggling to keep a secret from his deeply religious Southern Baptist parents. We were sitting there doing a Bible study. I was hiding. I was singing at church. I was a missionary. I did everything to try to be the best Christian. And I would just wake up and I was still gay. And so, at 17, Adam came out to his mother, Paulette. He said, I am gay. I know I am gay. And I just turned and looked to the side and tears just rolling down my face. And I looked at him and I said, Adam, a man shall not lay with another man. And he started crying. I wanted him to know that it's in the Bible. And you're going against God. Did you hug him at that moment? No, I did not hug him. And I remember hearing him tell somebody, when I went to my mom, instead of getting love and support, I got religion. A year later, after Adam was also rejected by his first love at college, he attempted suicide. I was trying to leave this world. I just wanted to die. While in the hospital, a youth pastor suggested a controversial treatment known as reparative or conversion therapy. Had you ever heard of that before? Never. What was it called? Healing from homosexuality. Even though it's been 45 years since the American Psychiatric Association determined that homosexuality is not an illness that can be cured, an estimated 700,000 adults in the U.S. have received some kind of conversion therapy. Evangelical people essentially believe that homosexuality is a sin. It's a transgression against God's heart and mind. You are safe because God is with you. Stan Mitchell, a pastor in Nashville, Tennessee, says conversion therapy is used every day, as he puts it, to save souls, even those of children as young as 10. These children are dealing with the fear that they might spend eternity tortured because of their natural way of being in the world. So to ask them, do you want that? Do you want to be gay? You're asking them, do you want to go to hell? To avoid that fate, Adam Tremor asked his family to help him pay for a retreat with an organization called Exodus International. The mission of Exodus was to help people who were same-sex attracted to not act on that. We're here to listen, to encourage. Exodus was once the leader in the field, in part because of its charismatic director, Alan Chambers. He refused to even say the word gay. Instead of using the word gay, I'm a person with same-sex attractions. And why is that better? Because I felt like the, even the word was caving in on something that we shouldn't cave in on. Chambers was the organization's best advertisement. He had undergone conversion therapy himself and now had a wife and two children. Did that give you hope? Absolutely. I looked at it and I said, wow, this can really happen. Lonely, frustrated, and that is the mood state that sets you up for homosexual enactment. The therapy is based on the belief that homosexuality is caused by nurture, not nature, and so it could be reversed. Hand her hands on hips, go! There are classes, as depicted in the current movie Boy Erased, on how to act less gay. Is this a manly shape I'm making, or is it a girly or feminine shape? 
Adam Trimmer was introduced to something called cuddle therapy, intended to create aversion to another man's touch. And we cuddled in his bed. You cuddled with another man? And this is supposed to help you get rid of your same sex. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, it's okay. It is okay because that's real. And Adam, like most who go through conversion therapy, was also told his homosexuality could be traced back to a troubled family relationship. Usually, for the boy who will develop same sex attractions around the age of two and a half or so, there's something that prevents him from detaching from his mother and attaching himself to his father. In Adam's case, a distant father and over-involved mother. The counselor looked at her and just told her that she was so overbearing as a mother and that she needed to let me go. And mind you, this is being told to a mother of a son who just tried to kill himself. What did that therapy do to your relationship with Adam? It killed it. It all but killed it. He didn't want to have anything to do with me. Alex Cooper says that what she was subjected to when she was 15 almost killed her. And when you say beat me, what do you mean? Like fists to the stomach. Raised in a loving Mormon home in Southern California, when Cooper came out to her parents, they sent her to Utah to live with a couple recommended by church leaders who offered unlicensed therapy. So I was there to become straight. Your parents thought that this couple could turn you straight. You know, it's, it's wild to think that it's even a thing that goes through people's minds, but it happens every day. At first, it was just meetings. It's going through the gospel and talking about why I was there. It's a giant, terrible mind game. But the most unbearable part, Cooper says, was a backpack filled with rocks that she was forced to wear all day, every day. Do you have any idea how much weight you were carrying? I think about 40 pounds. And the point of the backpack was to represent? The physical burden and pain of being gay. The so-called therapy didn't change her sexual orientation, but Cooper says it broke her spirit. And after several months, she too tried to take her life. On my 16th birthday, I, it was kind of like a gift to myself. I just took every pill in the house and I just remember being so excited to not be there anymore. I was a pastor in a mega church and I was party to destroying these people. Pastor Stan Mitchell once himself sent parishioners to conversion therapy. Do you have any idea of how many young people you had recommended go through conversion therapy? That I've tried to forget. I've tried to forget. But he can't forget the can't damage die. he's seen. In the last four years, I, I've done at least three or four funerals um, of people who took their life because of this issue. Since Mitchell began speaking out in 2015, he has lost two-thirds of his congregation. The only thing I regret is I didn't do it sooner. People died while I was trying to find courage. As for the American Medical and Psychological Associations, they warn against the use of conversion therapy. And now, more than a dozen states ban licensed therapists from using those practices on children. So especially if you're a woman and you've got some friends who are gay, just be careful about that relationship. But some powerful religious organizations, such as Focus on the Family, say the government is going too far. I want people to know that God changes people, that leaving homosexuality is a possibility, and that we should have the freedom to do so. The government shouldn't step between me and my counselor. That's not their role. Jeff Johnson, the group's issues analyst, insists people who don't want to be gay, even children, have the right to try to change. But you know the state has the right to limit any kind of therapy when there's some evidence that it can be harmful. You know, I know there's some outrageous things that happen in life, like backpacks with rocks. I know that's horrific, but those are such wildly extreme examples, and that's not what we're talking about in general 
I have met dozens and dozens of people mm. who have had deep change and deep transformation, and that's why we continue to advocate for their freedom. We haven't done everything right. But even the man who was once the living example of the power of conversion therapy admits he's never seen it work. We've hurt people. Alan Chambers shut down Exodus in 2013. It didn't make me straight. Here I am, happily married to a woman for almost 21 years. But you're still attracted to yes, men. That, that hasn't gone away, you know, and, and it, it won't. Alex Cooper finally ran away from the home where she was placed, and a Utah judge ruled she could return to her family and live as a gay woman. She's now 23 and shares an apartment with her girlfriend in Portland, Oregon. Where did you get that kind of strength? I knew what happy felt like. I grew up happy, and I, I just knew that I could have that again. You staying for Scrabble tonight? I think so. And Adam Trimmer quit therapy on his own and says he is now trying to undo the damage. Today, my mom and I have a restored relationship that conversion therapy tried to take away from us. It has been so powerful to reconnect with her. You have your church, and your church tells you that homosexuality is wrong, but you've got your son. The only way I can answer that is, I love God, I'm not gonna change that, and I love my son, I'm not gonna change that.